Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. Meet the trusted experts who will give you straight answers and will help guide you on the path of later life care. Now, here's your host, founder, caregiver, and CEO, Suzanne Newman. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders Radio Network. And we are here with amazing neurologist and uh, Alzheimer's clinician um, and director of the Center for Cognitive Health, Dr. Michael Mega, courtesy of Athera Farmer, who is sponsoring this uh, segment, this podcast. And Dr. Mega, it is a pleasure to have you with us as we learn about Alzheimer's disease, early detection, which is amazing. Um, We need to obviously lean on our FDA and our uh, political leaders to start um, making sure we can get early detection better in uh, out into the public. So obviously, how do we confirm if you've you're going to make a diagnosis? Let's say you get this uh, pre-diagnosis. What happens from there, Dr. Mega? So most of the people that come to my clinic um, are referred uh, because the either primary care doc or another neurologist isn't quite mm-hmm. sure whether or not they have what's called normal age-related uh, cognitive decline, you know, because we all, when we are past the age of 45, the standardized tests that we use to test memory, language, visual, spatial function, and executive function go down in terms of their normative value for each decade of life or half decade. Mm-hmm. So part and parcel of getting older is slowing down mentation. And so many people worry, well, is this the beginning of Alzheimer's disease or not? And so that's when I usually see them. Um, and recently, about mm, feels like seven, eight years ago, the definition of the disease changed to demand a biological marker be identified in the brain of people who have cognitive abnormalities beyond normal age-related change. And that that biological marker can be in the form of a PET scan that measures amyloid plaque burden in the brain, Mm -hmm. or a PET scan that measures tau burden that forms tingles in the brain. And so people uh, who have those biological markers are said to have preclinical Alzheimer's disease when they have no memory problem or thinking issues, or prodromal Alzheimer's disease when they have mild issues, but their family says that they're no longer uh, so impaired, that they're not so impaired that they can't live safely by themselves. Once the family says, oh, no, we can't leave them alone he'd be incompetent to live alone. That is the functional definition of dementia. Right. Dementia can be caused by many different disorders. It can be caused by vitamin deficiencies. It could be caused by stroke, by tumor, by traumatic brain injury. Uh, However, most of the cause is from Alzheimer's disease and Lewy body disease and vascular disease. So you can see that there's this arc of disease progression going from preclinical when you have a positive biological marker for plaque and tangle to prodromal when you're only mildly affected and have plaque and tangle in your brain to full-blown Alzheimer's disease when you have family saying you can't live by yourself anymore honey you've got full-blown dementia yeah and have plaque and tangle in your brain yeah that's uh, Most neurologists don't test for that. Um, The best way to get tests for that for free are to take part in clinical trials. Yeah. Why do you want to take part in a clinical trial? Well, the only way the FDA moves molecules forward through various levels of testing and into your drugstore is by those kind souls, those wonderful patients and families that volunteer to take part in a clinical trial. And that's the only way that we can f- join the worldwide fight against Alzheimer's to come up with a cure is to avail ourselves to getting the word out that these clinical trials are so important. Mm-hmm. 
And obviously, there's several types of clinical trials, are there not? Yes, they're uh, separated in phases. Phase one and two tend to be um, uh, animal tr trials first, and then safety dose finding trials. Mm -hmm. And it's typically phase three trials that safety has already been identified, and hopefully dosing has been identified, but not always. And then efficacy needs to be tested. And these phase three trials are tend to be longer, uh, longer lasting, as well as larger in the number of people they recruit in order to gain the statistical power to test a placebo, which is always part and parcel of a clinical trial, except in phase four, to test a placebo against the treatment arms. Mm -hmm. Then phase four clinical trials uh, can be also ordered uh, by the FDA or CMS now um, to uh, not not offer a placebo, but offer instead safety and long-term monitoring of a drug that's been already approved by the FDA. Right, right. And so obviously um, on behalf of Athera, we are here, they do a clinical trial. Tell us a little bit about their program. So Athera, uh, pharma is uh, based in Seattle, um, and they have a very interesting molecule that is both a nerve growth factor activator as well as uh, uh, it influences the anti-inflammatory um, uh, process that is hoped to help slow progression in AD. But more importantly, they're hoping um, for people getting better with their molecule. As you know, the drugs in the drugstore, Aricept or Dinepazil, Galantamine or Reminil, Rivastigmine or Exelon, and Nemenda or Memantine, all of those drugs that are currently available in the drugstore are known not to change the course of the disease, but wow. a small group of people can make some symptomatically improve for a relatively short period of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Athera is hoping to leverage their nerve growth factor mechanism in order to increase the neural communication between cells uh, that could be even revealed through um, brainwave patterns, but also wow. insulin paper testing. And so their drug is hopefully going to offer patients who are in the beginning of the middle stage of the disease hope to slow progression and make their lives and their families' uh, uh, lives better. Yes. Well, you know, and, and it's interesting too, when you said the best way to, to get treatment and the, I, I would say cutting edge and <clears throat> is to participate in a clinical trial because it's free. It gives you the opportunity to get cutting edge treatment that other people may not have the opportunity to get. So obviously there's a lot of advantages, but I think the other thing that we're missing too is, is the relationship that you have with someone like, you know, that is on the, that all you do is Alzheimer's, right? You, you are, you're treating people with Alzheimer's disease where if you just go to a general practitioner, they definitely don't know everything you know about the disease and how to bring people forward. And I guess that's why I always encourage people to, um, you know, to do, do so. Well, Suzanne, yeah, I'm a one trick pony. I've got yep. my one trick. And see, I love that about that. And, and it's obviously to understand um, that whole, you know, aspect of it is so vital and important. So when you're doing, um, you know, uh, as far as Alzheimer's disease, how long do clinical trials usually last? Well, it depends on how their design is. Um, the harder ones to accomplish are uh, the ones that try and um, uh, design a drug uh, intervention for prevention of Alzheimer's disease. Uh -huh. they, uh, prevention trials can last three to five years. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking for um, a molecule that has um, a more robust in, uh, uh, influence over the disease course, it can be a shorter trial with fewer people in it. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, sometimes a trial only needs 150 people in it for six months. Wow. Uh, like some of Athera's earlier trials uh, in order to see uh, 
the signal of a effect over time. So um, it depends on uh, what questions you're asking about a slowly smoldering disease course. So obviously the uh, symptomatic trials that were done and just uh, approved by the FDA, for example, lecanemab or lecembi, a size drug, required 18 months to show um, pretty impressive statistically significant uh, changes from the treatment group to the placebo group. Mm -hmm. uh, other trials <clears throat> may need less time uh, with less people. So it depends right. on, uh, you, you know, clinical trials are only necessary for things that are harder to see. You never needed a controlled placebo clinical trial to prove that penicillin cured pneumococcal pneumonia. You only right. need to see a few people come from death's door and recover back to normal. So yes. there's no clinical trial necessary for that. Yeah. And you know, that's what's, that's so amazing. And obviously um, if you have a loved one and you're thinking about a clinical trial, how do you, do you go to a, your general doctor and ask for that? Um, what, what is the steps possible for people to the get involved? The first step I would do for your uh, listeners out in the audience is to go to a, a website called clinicaltrials.gov. Okay. And then type in your city and the disease that you're interested in, and then hit search. And all of the clinical trials that have either finished enrolling, are about to enroll, or are still enrolling, will show up on your screen in your city. And then you click off the button for ones that are done, and you look to see the ones that are coming up. And that's so valuable for sure. And, and that will give you the lay of the land in your region. Fabulous. And Dr. Mega, how do we reach you? So uh, you can come to our website and get more information from our blog page or call us up 503-476-9788 or come and visit us. We do free memory screens to the people in our area. And we also... Um, give uh, lectures in, in the area. And as I said, uh, provide information via our blog page and our interactions with the Alzheimer's Association. So Perfect. I want to thank Athira uh, uh, for uh, so sponsoring these pod podcasts and giving us the opportunity to uh, get folks excited, not only about their trial, but other trials and the lay of the land in research and Alzheimer's. Absolutely. And I thank you for taking the time and educating us. And we would love to have you back in the future, Dr. Mega, whenever you want to come back. And thanks to everyone for joining us on this information. And remember, if you have a loved one that is having some issues, you're not so sure, there is hope around the horizon. And I do believe there is going to be a cure someday soon. We at Answers for Elders thank you for listening. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.